Hello, and welcome once again to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Rick Jay, your host, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Rick J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome viewers uh, to Spotlight on the Arts. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Gary Holstein, director of the Dom Museum of Contemporary Arts in Sedalia, Missouri. Mr. Holstein, welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm truly excited uh, to turn the spotlight on you and the Dhamma Contemporary Arts today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and I appreciate what you're doing to build the connectivity of the regional art scene. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, we do go worldwide now, and uh, including the state of Missouri, even a gentleman from Latvia being interviewed, sent to me by the uh, Kansas City Arts Coalition. So that was interesting. So I thank you for recognizing my uh, attempts to bring the art world together. There's so many viewers worldwide now on our, our network. So, well, thank you. Well, this is your first visit to Spotlight on the Arts. I hope there's many more. I've been looking forward to this occasion since meeting you uh, uh, first at the 20 year reception for the Dom of Contemporary uh, Arts, uh, where you were recognized and introduced as the new director. So I offer my congratulations once again. Thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. Well, if I may, I always start with, can you tell us a little bit about Mr. Gary Holstein? Well, sure, I'm originally from Arkansas. Um, my, I kind of got started in the arts in an indirect path, so my grandfather was a police officer and a preacher. But when he would go home, he would build these worlds of characters that he was creating, and so he would draw out all the characters, create these storylines for them, and the settings. And so that was where I got my interest in world building, which is what I consider my own personal artwork to be, uh, although I introduce a bit more fantasy. And um, that was what drove me. At first, I started off in philosophy. I was, I, I was going to um, you know, solve all the world's problems through that. But I decided that I would always come back to drawing as a way to solve problems, as a way to realize ideas. And so ultimately, I landed in the art world as what it, my practice was. Um, and I grew up there, went to um, Fayetteville as my first area of study, or first place to study, and then I ended up in uh, pursuing a teaching, and then ultimately, and we'll get to this a little bit in a moment, I think, uh, I ended up in the, in the world of putting together art shows. More in depth into his philosophy, you might say, his uh, uh, way of looking at exhibiting art as a director in a facility like this beautiful facility here in Sedalia, Missouri. Well now, uh, you're a married man. Would you like it? <laughs> shout outs permissible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I am married. We live here in, in Stalia. Um, we live just across from Horace Mann. Uh, we bought a house and my wife Jennifer is a potter and my son Mason is a uh, video game enthusiast amongst many other things. Um, and you know, he's got a, a sketchbook full of drawings of himself. So. Oh, excellent. So he's already into it. We want to talk about some of the future also in the, the second part. <laughs> oh, great, great. Um, well, how, so you, was be, you became a director. You had to be inspired for that. Did that take a little bit of work where you worked into a directorship? I think I know the city of uh, Sedalia, Missouri is really honored to, uh, to, shall we say, grab a hold of such a talent and have you as the director here. So, Sure. Well, the interesting thing about my path is that I started off as a studio artist. And I 
got a, I was a, an apprentice for a world-recognized artist, Donald Roller Wilson, and that was really where I started to do more of the business side of art. Um, I, I worked with a lot of galleries. I would ship. I would speak with uh, customers uh, who were purchasing pieces. And what I realized, with their just, this was Fayetteville before Crystal Bridges. Uh, I, what I realized that there wasn't a lot of opportunities for artists who were my friends in art school, who were my friends in the in the community to exhibit. And so I started putting together shows and pop up venues, uh, and I started to organize. Um, sort of on, you know, uh, finding places to put art shows together. And then I moved from that to creating a, a student-run gallery as part of what I did for my MFA program there in Fayetteville. Fayetteville. Oh my, I can see the, the base is now uh, starting to develop. So you became really a marketeer <laughs> for your artists like many are struggling. We want to talk about that in the future of art uh, here in the, in the world, uh, in our area, in the Midwest, throughout. So there's more to come on that. So, well, so what, you could I ask what continues then to inspire with this type of uh, venue or work assignment, I guess we could say, I guess that alone inspires you to continue on. Well, I think that what I found was that I really enjoyed working with artists, living artists specifically. And so it's the same sort of idea that got me started, making opportunities for artists that inspires me to keep going. It's just expanded to making connectivity within a community and to, you know, and also provide opportunities for future people, students, which, you know, I'm at, I'm at a college, and I've always been somewhere within the education system as far as what I do. I'm not that interested in the for-profit side. I'm more interested in the service side of um, art. Like Watashi, I've tried to bring the art worlds together, especially in the Midwest, and now it's expanded on out, so I understand that completely. And uh, he, uh, well, you're, you are working at the State Fair Community College. As that's where the DOM, as, um, should we say the DOM Center for short, is located and we'll give him, be giving more of that information out on that. Well, so your background, we've, we've shared that. Is there anything we missed as far as your background? Sure, so um, like I said, I, I actually started off as a studio artist. I got a BA uh, combined in philosophy and painting. Then I got a master's in organizational communication. Um, and while I was going through that program, I became the apprentice to Donald Roller Wilson. And that was where I got a lot of experience working within the art world. And then I graduated and I taught for a couple of years at Arkansas Tech University Foundations courses. And then I realized what I really missed was putting together art shows. And so what I did was I uh, started hunting for opportunities uh, in art communities. And I found this wonderful little town called New Harmony, which was the former site of two utopian communities back in the early 1800s. And, um, but it's probably more significantly for me is that in the 60s and 70s, Jane Owen came in and she did an early form of what's known as placemaking, in which you build an intentional community around the arts. And so she took buildings and she picked them up and she moved them into the historic district and she brought in Richard Meyer and she created the Athenaeum as the visitor center, which is the first of his uh, white box spaces that he designs. Um, and she brought in Philip Johnson and created a roofless church and uh, she created this arts uh, center that I was the director of for a little under a decade. Uh, which was uh, a tiny little um, contemporary art space in the middle of the cornfields in south, the corner of southwestern Indiana. Oh and so it's, uh, it's been referred to as like the Marfa of the cornfields. Yes. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful space. And it's where I really started, you know, thinking about how 
art spaces can really help to build a community, the quality of life in a community. And you know, that's where I really, uh, I really developed that. And then I moved to um, the Bradbury Art Museum in Jonesboro, which is another at the Arkansas State University there. Uh, and that's where I really started working with collections more because the other space was all about exhibitions, all about the community. And I brought in a couple hundred pieces to that space while I was there. And I, but what I was really hunting for was a space that was more focused on contemporary art, like what the Dom yeah, does. And so when this opportunity came open, I recognized that it was, a, it, was a, it was a chance for me to really build upon a strong foundation in contemporary art yes. and to really work from that foundation to leave my own mark and to bring in artists and provide opportunities for living artists uh, and you know, to, to make sure that this is here for another 20 years because I came in right at the 20th year yes. of operation. So you have progressed from your initial philosophy of art into different areas, into the cornfield. Now, you were inspirational. Surely that lady understood that she had someone to work with to help build. Did that happen? Well, that particular individual, it was one of the, you know, it's, it's similar to this. That person was not there by the time well, when I was there. She came in in the, uh, she was there in the 60s and 70s and she had passed before I got there. And so I was able to help. I came in and I worked at, um, it was actually the University of Southern Indiana. And we were part of Historic New Harmony, which yes. was the, the tourism. They gave the tours for the town. And we worked with uh, the community to do public art and to work with them for bringing in uh, the festivals and you know all of that side. Of, of a living community. So it was a historical village, but it was also a living community. And that was, that was the part for me that was the most exciting, was that they took the history and they brought in the contemporary as a way to have like a, or to build a dialogue about what was possible moving forward. Right. With your explanation, I kind of see how my, um, myself, um, seems like you're working in the communities to try to build the art in the communities, uh, get everyone on the same page, opportunities, instead of each one uh, doing their own little thing. I tried to organize with this program, bringing uh, in all the uh, communities together, which I have done probably a, a hundred mile or more ra radius. And at the same opportunity, I was asked to do a show called Spotlight on the Arts call for nature's art at the Department of Conservation at a run center in Jefferson City, Missouri, our capital. So it seems like when we get into this, this idea of bringing people together, the artists together and offering them this and that. So 50, 51 of the artists that have been on Spotlight on the Arts uh, are actually become the uh, call for nature's art at the Orange Center there in Jefferson City. Uh, we have 160 some plus, including yourself now, you're invited uh, the next year shows to pick a, an, or one of your own that's uh, conservation nature related. So that becomes an automatic invitation. So I can see where it was sort of brought together by the overall dream or energies that developed uh, the show and then came together for the artists and it just seems to expand. So I kind of relate in a sense and that's what our viewers do. They, they're in this position, a lot of them in different communities in Missouri and they've got that same philosophy or that same drive to bring the communities together and introduce the art to the art lovers and to the artists naturally. So I have to say great job and uh, I can identify 100%. Well, to move on, I guess we better take a break, uh, if I may, uh, Holly. So, if you just uh, relax a moment, we'll uh, we'll get back to you. Absolutely. Um, after the break, Gary will fill us in on his favorite subject matter, his personal subject matter, his concept of developing an exhibit. Uh, preview for January 23, plus a discussion on the current state of art, worldwide in fact, and especially locally, 
um, we might even talk about marketing. So where, it's, where it is at this time, where it is heading, and, and the impact of the current day technology, if he has a twist on that. So there's much more here on Spotlight of the Arts, so stay with us, we'll be right back. Green Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. Hi, I'm Rick J, and I'm Jeffrey Pernell, and we're here to introduce you to GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Hope you'll tune in. Tune in and watch all the great shows by independent producers music, and film, and podcast. Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and or Google us on GIAJ, Global Media Network. It's a free download now. Thank you. Welcome back everyone to Spotlight on the Arts, visiting today in Sedalia, Missouri at the State Fair Community College where the Dom, or should we say the museum, the Dom Museum of Contemporary Art, uh, now directed by Mr. Gary Holstein. So you, we covered a lot that first segment. Uh, uh, Mr. Holstein, I'd like to now uh, kind of continue along those same lines of thought and uh, sharing uh, information. So let's go ahead and say, uh, what is your concept of planning an exhibit? Uh, what kind of visitors to the Dom Contemporary, contemporary uh, Museum of Art uh, look for in the future? Sure. So one of the things that I try to do when I plan an overall schedule, is to make sure that I have diversity built into diversity. diversity and diversity of background, diversity of materials, so that any person that comes in feels like there's something that they can connect to. Um, I also, one of my primary goals is to build connectivity. And so that's connectivity regional, that's connectivity across the world and within smaller subgroups, bringing them together. And I have an example with the exhibition that we'll be bringing up in just a moment in the spring. Um, and so it's all about making sure that I'm, I'm building oppor or build and opportunities for artists into this. So I like to work with living artists. I like to um, make sure that I am connecting with a lot of different artists over time. And then I'm bringing in um, multiple media so that every person that comes in has something that will they can, they can find within that show that they A, understand, and B, uh, find fascinating, hopefully. Um, yes. And so those are, the, those are the founding principles for what I do. And within this particular institution, a part of it is utilizing the collection to build out. And so what I've been doing over the last little bit of time and will continue doing is looking at the existing collection and identifying where we are strong 
so that you can build on that, but also looking at where you're weak so that you're making sure you're not missing groups of people Yes. Um, and that you're not missing uh, exciting things that are happening in the contemporary art world in terms of process, media, that sort of thing. Can you share with the world a little bit of the history of the Dom? I know we, uh, Dom, uh, Dr. Dom mm -hmm. and um, Doug Freed were the initial. So if you can share with the world a little history on the foundation there of this beautiful facility. Sure. So this started off with the donation of about 200. This is actually a really excellent exhibition for this conversation because this is called 20 Years of Dom. And so 20 years ago, um, this space was created and it's part of an overall gift for the future of the community to help build and make the community increase the quality of life yes. for, for this region. But um, if you go to the bottom floor, you'll see selections of the original 200 pieces, including, including a wonderful work by Helen Frankenthaler that's down there. Um, and it, it was predominantly focused on abstract expressionism and large-scale ceramics. And this was Dr. Dom's collection, mm -hmm. or different? It was his collection, it was in his house. Oh, in his house. Yeah, many of the pieces were actually in his house. And then some were bought specifically uh, to go in this building, like the Chihuly piece that we have, this yes. beautiful piece in the window there. Um, and so, as part of that, there was an endowment that was created, and that endowment continues to build upon that original 200 pieces. And what you'll see on this floor, um, as well as the top floor and down the hallway, you're gonna see the last 15 years, which Tom Pache was the director. And so um, Doug Freed, as you mentioned, was the original founding director. He helped establish this. He helped uh, build the, the first um, portion of the collection and then Tom came in and he was here uh, working with the collection until he recently retired and this is um, what we're sitting in right now is a section of the paintings that came from that time there's also a section of um, photos and there's a ceramic focus upstairs and a print focus down the hallway so you have different focus it's just not coming in and seeing uh, one type you are have expanded within the levels of the Dom. So we invite everyone to make a visit to Missouri. Uh, I know I had visitors at the Call for Nature's Art from Brazil I visited with, uh, also from China that had seen the program Spotlight on the Arts on their local channels or on the streaming channels that, uh, that we're um, uh, will be actually presenting uh, uh, this interview on Roku, on a Apple TV, and also uh, on uh, Amazon Fire TV. And then, naturally, you know, we have to say uh, you too also. And uh, we'll do some, uh, put on the timeline, some of the uh, photo or the shots from my camera to kind of enhance uh, so we say, bait you to come on and, and visit, schedule a trip to Missouri in the Midwest, today, out of Kansas City, not that many miles out. So rent a car and come on down and, and see the, such awesome art, put it that way, <laughs> in a different, uh, should we say, medium. So, well, um, and you can, you can do that through December 18th to see the overall exhibition. Yes. This room and the room behind us over here with the photos will change out at that point and we'll be, we'll be bringing in a brand new exhibition. Okay, so how do visitors uh, get informed and in, in what is happening uh, at the Dome? Uh, any promotions or uh, how do you promote, advertise? Sure, so, you know, I think for your worldwide audience especially, your easiest thing to do is to look at social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we, we post regularly on those. You can also go to our website, of course, um, and that will have the latest information, but events, upcoming things, that sort of thing, I highly recommend that you, you follow us on Insta or um, yeah, Instagram or, or Facebook. We, we, do, we maintain both of those. I'm on there and you're welcome to reach out um, to me as an individual. Uh, um, just, you know, if you, if you go in, we have such a unique name that if you look up the Dom Museum of Contemporary Art, yeah, then you're going you're gonna to find us on, you can't miss it. So 
and then if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, I, it's predominantly my museum side of things is yes. what you'll find there. And then, uh, you know, the only thing I would say is uh, do note that my first name is spelled with two R's, yes. and it's Gary Holstein. Um, and you, that's also a direct email for me is GaryHolstein at DobMuseum.org. Okay, great. And we'll put that on the timeline sure. uh, as a, tr uh, a, t a ticker tape on the bottom to make sure all this... Uh, gets out there to the world. And I, someone does come in and say, I saw your interview from China or from Japan or wherever. It'll be great to hear that, um, should we say, input <laughs> response. Absolutely. We, we capture that information at the front desk, so we'll oh, be able to super. help. Okay. Now, can we discuss the impact of the COVID uh, on your, your situation? The, the current state of art and the today's technology and how that may be affecting, if it does at all. Can you highlight that a little bit, how COVID and, and the state of the art nowadays, marketing is a tough nut to crack, I understand right now, talking to many of the artists and interviewing them, the whole marketing world has changed. Uh, even to the, it used to be that people did look and maybe want to buy uh, Rick Jay's art or uh, Gary Holstein's art or, or what have you. Now it's more about the painting itself or the, the uh, sculpture or what have you. Have you heard any input or feedback? Yeah, I mean, I think that, of course, right at first, it slowed down all of the types of events that we would hold. But I think that one of the advantages we have is the type of space that we are is that we are a space that you can come and be with small groups of people. Bring a group. You can bring a group. You can have kind of a personal experience if you want to. You can get a tour if you want a tour. And so you can kind of adjust, you can kind of approach it however you want to. And then it's self-guided. Self if you want if you want a if you want a, a tour, then you can reach out to us ahead of time and pre-plan a tour. Vicky does a wonderful job. Ahead of time. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, if, if we happen to be there and um, not have other things pre-scheduled, then we'll, we'll do an impromptu tour. We try to always greet people, of course, um, but we generally will schedule docents. We have a, a wonderful volunteer docent community. Uh, one of our biggest programs, and especially right now, is the Dom Escape, in which we bring in hundreds of um, school-aged children. School and they, they get to come into a museum setting for probably the first time. Yes. Um, and, they, uh, and, what, and that relies on our volunteer docent our community. And they come in and we, we train them in um, giving a wonderful uh, program in which they, um, it's called Visual Thinking Strategies, in which they come in and they evaluate pieces. They're not told what it means, they're given the opportunity to look at a piece and tell us what they think it means. And so it's, instead of it being a traditional approach to giving tours, it's really about developing creative thinking skills yes. and creating a situation where there's multiple right answers. Yes, um, with, not one answer. Exactly, and so that's, and I'm, I, lo I love that approach because you know, that's what I think, I think that's what art really does for a community, for a person, is that it creates the opportunity to learn to be empathetic, to think in different yes. ways, and to, you know, have, see things from another person's perspective. And so, and I think that, you know, back, kind of circling back to the COVID question, is that um, I think that while there was a moment in which people didn't feel comfortable coming into any public space, we're moving past that. We're getting, the, the students are back. We're getting people coming back to our events. And you know, we, we're in a perfect position to provide that, that sort of safe experience. Technology, we, when I was at another location when COVID first hit, and we developed a virtual museum. Virtual museum. Uh, and we did all of our exhibitions online. And that was really popular at first, but people kind of got um, tech, uh, tired of tech, I guess is the way that I'll say it. Um, and so at first it was really, there was a lot of response to that. And then as it goes on, um, we people didn't want to go to the virtual space. They wanted to get back and you know experience things in thing. in real life again. Yes. And I think that you know one of the 
there's always going to be artists using technology in new ways, and I think that's super dynamic. But I think there's something that happens within a space when you're putting different pieces within a space and people within a space that is difficult to duplicate um, when you're not in that shared space. And and I think that and I think there there's a lot of strength there. But I also I like the I like the type of space that we are using. Uh, one of the other things about technology that I really love is that um, artists will often post videos of them making, how they make, yes. telling their own story. And it gives the opportunity to connect with artists all over the world and learn yes. what they do and learn from them um, in a whole nother level. And so that, you know, there's, there's that sort of connectivity isn't necessarily possible if you come into the space and you hear an artist lecture because you might not have the opportunity to speak with them and have that so ongoing you, you connectivity. I, I think you're really um, presenting a, a great, shall we say, foundation from the heart of your own philosophy, which uh, I really admire this overall structure that you've coming from where you're coming from, shall we say. Well, um, Gary, you surely have favorites. Can you, you, can you talk about some of your favorites there at the Dom or in your own private collection? We'll share those uh, on the timeline as you're talking about them. Sure, so it's really hard for me to choose individual pieces as favorite pieces, but what I can speak to is pieces, of course, my favorite pieces in my personal collection are going to be the ones that I know the artists, and so I have like an ongoing connection with them. Yeah. That's that tends to be what I buy. Um, but in terms of pieces within the collection, I'll I'll go for the or go to the Richard Notkin piece that we have upstairs called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. um, he it's this wonderful piece in which he creates all these tiny little tiles, and then by putting them all together, you'll see the um, nuclear explosion basically and so it's a piece about you know where he's definitely utilizing his artistic skills yes. to make a statement that he wants to share with the world um, regarding the dangers of war there's little images of Guernica um, there's um, various other elements about life and death and you know if you're a person um, who's so inclined you might recognize the title as being perhaps a line from Shakespeare um, but you don't have to know all that. You're going to get the basic idea about um, trying to convey the danger of the current path that we're on. That is what this artist is going for. And then, you know, I'll, I would couple that with a, sh a piece from Rebecca uh, Bogard, who is an artist that we're bringing in for our next exhibition. She's a ceramic artist and she works um, as part of the Art Access Group, which it, we're yes. partnering with um, uh, Casey uh, Whittier, who's a professor at the Kansas City Art Institute and a board member of Art Access. And, but Rebecca's piece is called Shelter, but is from Memento Mori, which is an installation of her pieces in which she's saying, um, you know, it's remember that you're going to die, basically. And so you have like this same sort of thing, same sort of idea, basic idea of remembrance of like the inevitable doom, yes. but you have it coming from two different ways because hers are these like fantastical creatures that look at utopian idealism of these of evolved creatures who are learning to live in harmony with humanity and humanity is learning to live in harmony with them. And I like to, as a person who curates exhibitions, put these sort of pieces that speak to similar ideas but in very different ways together yes. because it's all about how dialogues are created in the space. And connecting. And connecting, exactly. Excellent, excellent. They're both awesome pieces. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, you know, of course, I'm sure that as I um, live and work in the community in this region, I'll be building my own personal uh, collection as, as, I'm, as I'm meeting people and yeah. building the collection of the Dom as well. Super, super. Thank yeah. you again. Yes. Very, uh, two great selections. Thank you. Excellent. Well, how did time again, uh, Mr. Gary? Uh, do you have any personal message to the viewers? Uh, the beginning artists, the professional artists, uh, the art levels. Look at the camera if you can. If you have a, 
a final word for them. Yeah, one of the, the big things that I want to do is to make the space either, whether you're a professional artist or a person that doesn't see yourself as a museum going individual, to, I want to welcome you here. I want you to realize that I'm interested in who you are as an artist. I'm interested in who you are as a person. And this is a place for you. In addition to the art programs that we do, we're starting up programs like yoga and having different types of events that allow people to come in and enter the space in different ways. Um, and I hope that you will come back in January. Uh, this is the 20 years, but we're going to be partnering with Art Axis, which is an international uh, ceramic exhibition uh, group, and we're going to create an exhibition that will draw from our collection and will connect with uh, artists from all over as well. So thank you once again um, for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts. It's been an inspiration to visit with you and, and it has been an informational and educational experience, I'm sure, for everyone. So thank you again. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, that wraps up uh, a, another great look at uh, an inspiring director at the Dom Museum of Contemporary Art in Sedalia, Missouri. Thank you, viewers, for watching. I'm Rick J. saying stay healthy and safe. See you next time right here on Spotlight on the Arts.